Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or to my channel if you're discovering me for the very first time. Today I am here to talk to you about some books. I'm finally going to give you the book reviews of the two books that I've read in January as I promised on Sunday. I've tried to do this video a few times now and I'm really struggling because like I said in my very very first booktube video I'm not very good at talking about books yet. That's why I'm here. So if you're looking at this and you're pretty disappointed by the fact that I am not wording properly or that I'm coming across like I don't like these books or ungenuine or anything like that just bear in mind that I'm not very good at talking about books yet I'm still trying to find the vocabulary for it I'm still trying to find a way to express my thoughts and feelings in a way that comes across as both genuine and informative I promise it's part of my goal to get better at that When you collect marine animals, there are certain flatworms so delicate that they are almost impossible to capture whole, for they break and tatter under the touch. You must let them ooze and crawl of their own will onto your knife blade and then lift them gently into your bottle of seawater. Perhaps this might be the best way to write this book, to open the pages and let the stories crawl in by themselves. To me, that quote is pretty much the best way to describe this book because the way that John Steinbeck writes isn't really one long narrative. It is a collection of narratives and voices from all of the people who happen to live in this community on Cannery Row. The book was less of a full-on plotline and more of a kind of study of characterization or like character analysis than actually a story. The descriptions are always detailed and meticulous and Basically, it just gives you this feeling that you've walked into Cannery Row and you're standing there in the middle of the street and you're just watching all of the people go by and watching all of the things that they're doing. It just has this really vibrant, lifelike sense to it where everything, like, you, you feel like things are happening, but not in like a fast paced action story way, but just in a hustle and bustle of everyday life kind of way, which I really, really liked. The characters are really interesting and there are a lot of them. In fact, there are characters that might get introduced only for a chapter that then disappear that you never really hear of again, but they always provide interesting stories. The depth of the characters is something that I really, really enjoyed about this book, actually. It's one of my favourite things about it. All of these characters are really, really meticulously and detailedly drawn. Now it sounds like it's a painting instead of a book. They're really, really well rounded out characters and they give you a sense that they're not necessarily lifelike, they're almost larger than life. Henry the painter was not French and his name was not Henry. Also, he was not really a painter. Henry had so steeped himself in stories of the left bank in Paris that he lived there although he had never been there. Feverishly, he followed in periodicals the Dadaist movements and schisms, the strangely feminine jealousies and religiousness, the obscurantisms of the forming and breaking schools. Regularly, he revolted against outworn techniques and materials. One season, he threw out perspective. Another year, he abandoned red, even as the mother of purple. Finally, he gave up paint entirely. It is not known whether Henry is a good painter or not, for he threw himself so violently into his movements that he had very little room left for painting of any kind. So these are the kinds of characters that I was talking about. They're really, really interesting, vibrant, a little bit bizarre, a little bit sort of above normal, almost caricature-like, but they're just so fun to read about that you don't really care. And you have so much fun immersing yourself in all of these people that are part of this community that by the time you get to the end of the book, you don't really care that not a lot has happened in terms of plotline because you've just been given this really, really beautifully painted portrait of this place, of the community of people that live in it, and also like a mini study of human nature and the human condition as well. If you're interested in more sort of plot-based novels, this probably isn't the book for you. But if you like the idea of having something to be able to read in between other books, something that you can read a couple of chapters of on the couch and then put down and not have to worry about too much by the time you pick it up again, this is definitely a book that I would recommend to you. That being said, there were a couple of things that I didn't necessarily like about this novel. One of them was the fact that the final two chapters got a little bit over poetic in my opinion. I've heard that that's something that Steinbeck can do from time to time is get a little bit overzealous in his poeticism. It felt like John Steinbeck got to the end of the novel and was like holy crap I gotta actually finish up my theme here and I gotta get my point across so we kind of added a few poems in and a weird chapter about it 
gopher and it, yeah, it sort of got a bit rushed towards the end in my opinion. The other thing that some people might be a bit upset by is that this book was written quite a while ago. It comes from a place where people weren't as nece necessarily as informed about other cultures and people from other countries. So we've got a couple of characters that seem to me to come from this sort of place of misinformation. There also is a quote that I thought was quite funny but I know nowadays is not necessarily appropriate to, to make jokes about which is like stuff um, about body image shall we say like there's a quote about Ugh, let me just read it to you so it says doc awakened very slowly and clumsily like a fat man getting out of a swimming pool his mind broke the surface and fell back several times now I know that this comes from it doesn't come from a place of meanness but I also know that in the day and age that we live in nowadays, people are a lot more cautious about that and wary of making sure that they never make anyone feel like an outsider or like they're being judged or laughed at or anything like that of any kind. So there's bits and pieces in this novel that clearly come from a place before that kind of attitude has grown because obviously that attitude really has only grown in the last decade. So be wary of that if, this is, if that is the kind of thing that will upset you. Um, that being said, like I said, definitely it's not intentional, it was written in the 1940s, it just comes from a place of misinformation and just ignorance. It comes from a place of ignorance more than anything else. In my opinion that didn't detract anything from the book because the book itself was still beautiful and lighthearted and the characters were all deep and very well drawn and very very quirky. Just a fun read in general, really. Anyway, that concludes my review of Canary Row. If it has ended a little bit abruptly, it's because I still haven't really decided how I feel about giving books ratings. So I haven't decided whether or not I'm giving this book or the other book from today a star rating yet. If I do, I will mention that in the comments or add a little tile slide afterwards to tell you. But at the moment, I still haven't really decided how I feel about that and I still haven't really decided on a process for doing that. So for now, all you get from me really is just that this was a very fun book to read, a very relaxing book to read, um, with one or two little important thoughts to think about, which I will mention in my discussion video. So if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts on this book and perhaps what some of the themes or messages from this book are, then I would recommend that you watch my in-depth discussion book. I've tried to make it spoiler free. If there are any spoilers, I will put a warning at the start. So you should be able to watch it even if you haven't read the book. Otherwise, my review of Everything's Illuminated is up now as well. Feel free to go and have a look at that if you're interested in that book. I know that that is a book that I've talked about a lot. And if neither of those interest you, then I will see you on Sunday. In the meantime, stay classic. Also, it is currently 9am in the morning and it is already 30 degrees and I'm just desperately waiting for this cool change to arrive so if I look a little bit dishevelled that's why it is flipping hot here. It is so hot.